Welcome to Virtual Vacations, a Smarter Travel Media Podcast. On this episode, we invite you to close your eyes, leave your bags unpacked, and join us on a relaxing walk through Paris. Before we go on this virtual vacation, take a minute to relax and breathe. Find a comfortable place to sit, close your eyes, and take a few slow, deep breaths. Feeling the inhale, the slight pause as the inhale turns to exhale, and then following the exhale to where it turns again into an inhale. Starting with your feet and slowly working your way to your head, feel the muscles in your body relax. Here, there's enough space to take a pause and come into the moment. Let's begin our journey. Welcome to springtime in Paris. Let's go for a walk. It's late afternoon. A storm has just passed, leaving the city sparkling and the blue sky punctuated by puffy clouds. The trees are clad in blush-colored blossoms and tiny spring leaves, and the air is fresh and cool. You're on the left bank of the Seine River, standing in a tiny park that most people miss as they wander by. The square René Viviani has everything you expect in a Paris park. Groomed paths, a fountain, beds of colorful flowers, and benches where people stop to rest and admire the view. But it's also home to a few unusual and special things. Dotting the park are bits of worn, intricately carved stone, the remnants of a 19th century restoration of Notre Dame, which sits within view just across the river. This small park is also home to the oldest tree in Paris. You walk over to this 400-year-old locust tree, look up at its ancient branches, marveling at the way it rests on concrete posts now, but continues to grow and thrive. It's time to continue the walk, so walk out of the park via the wrought iron gates and make your way along the quay, admiring the view of Notre Dame. From here, you can see the flying buttresses and the restoration, but your destination is a cafe on the right bank, so you continue on, skirting the Ile de la Cité by walking along the bridge at its far edge. There are no crowds here, just a few people like you walking through the garden-like setting of the island's border. A few boats float lazily by, and it isn't long before you turn to cross onto the Ile Saint-Louis, taking in the sight of the two islands and both the right and the left bank of Paris, simply by standing still for a moment and turning in a slow circle. You continue your way, crossing the bridge and stepping onto the Ile Saint-Louis. You stroll by a restaurant and notice customers sitting outside again after the rain, settled into rattan chairs under the green awning, soaking up the late afternoon sun. As you pass, you hear the tinkle of cups on saucers. Follow the narrow Rue Saint-Louis en Ville, where the apartment buildings create a stately canyon. From here, you can't see the rest of the city, and the island feels so compact and quiet, it's almost like walking through a sleepy village. Even the sounds are dampened by the buildings around you. For a moment, you hear only birds and the occasional faraway sounding car. You slow down here, savoring a peaceful moment in the heart of this busy city, just enjoying being here in Paris on a walk on a beautiful day. Continuing, you turn north, toward Paris's right bank, 
and cross the stone arches of the Pont Marie. You walk partway over the bridge, skirting the occasional puddle that reflects back the sky, and then pause and look out at the Seine. The river flows under you, shepherding sightseeing boats and barges along its waters, and creating a wide, open space that allows you to get a view of the ornate buildings bordering the river all the way to the horizon. You cross onto the right bank, taking a meandering route along small streets and pedestrian paths, finding your way up a path and then a stairway that leads to a little bistro whose terrace is defined by potted hedges that are small, but perfectly trimmed and a thriving green. The smell of roasted chicken and frites floats in the air. A church looms up ahead on the left, and as you pass, you notice the door is propped open. You hear someone practicing the organ. It's a song you don't recognize, but whose notes are light and fleeting and remind you of spring. Up ahead, you watch as a laughing cluster of students cross the street and then turn a corner and disappear into the walled garden of a school. Ready for a break, you see a cafe up ahead the one you've been thinking of. Its exterior is painted deep red and its names painted in thin gold script. There are a few tables outside and a cozy interior. The waiter is patient and brings you just the coffee you hoped for. You reach into your bag and discover you've brought your favorite book. And there's a Le Monde newspaper on the table so you can practice reading French if you'd like. And as you open the cover of your book to the first page and take a sip of your hot, relaxing coffee, this is where we'll leave you. Feel free to continue sipping your coffee or to slowly return from the trip and rejoin your regularly scheduled day. Thanks for traveling with us. We'll see you again soon. Virtual Vacations is a Smarter Travel Media podcast. This episode was written by Christine Sarkis, executive editor at smartertravel.com, and produced by Carol McPherson with executive producer Heath Alva. Virtual Vacations is also available, complete with meditative visuals, on YouTube at www.youtube.com slash smartertravel. This episode was sponsored by Jet Setter the stylish traveler's ultimate muse, and an insider source for everything you need to live a jet-setting lifestyle. To learn more, visit them online at www.jetsetter.com or find them on YouTube at Jetsetter.